Good morning, friends. I'm just going to have a small talk with you today. And it's going to be on Sweden. Now, in the Southeast Asia, for example, where I am now in Singapore, Sweden is not considered to be a very important place. It's a small country and its population is just one million. It doesn't have any impact. But it's economically very sound and it has the best welfare state in the world, I would say. So, in that aspect, Sweden is important as far as Europe is concerned. Sweden is also important for another point because it has taken in the maximum number of refugees, basically from Syria, Iraq and Afghanistan. And these now constitute almost 20% of the population of Sweden. So, Sweden is in a very grave predicament. Predicament in the sense that's basically concerning the minority, which is the Muslims who have come to Sweden. And these people do not integrate with Swedish culture, with Swedish ethos. And there is a far-right group and one of their leaders, no point in naming him here, he went and burned the Quran just two days back in front of the Turkish embassy. And the defense minister of Sweden, who was to visit Turkey to discuss the Turkey's embargo or the non-approval of Sweden joining the NATO, the visit was cancelled by Turkey. And Turkey still has a hold and not allowing Sweden to become a member of NATO. It's another point why Sweden wants to become a member of NATO. Because a nation with one million people has got no threat and certainly the Russians have got no threat on Sweden. But then this is a make-believe world, a fear being fostered by the Americans that look, Russia is the terror, the bugbear, beware. So, they wanted to join the NATO. But all that is okay. What is more important, what I'm going to talk about today is the divide in Sweden. The Christians are now realizing that they are under threat. 20% is a very big number. And Sweden took all these people with open arms. Come, they said, we'll look after you. They didn't look after them. What has happened is that 90% of all shootings and crimes are done by this 20%. These people are not integrating. They want their own Sharia. And most of them are the young men who go around playing with the Swedish girls. And... You know what happens next. So now, Sweden is an example of Islamic takeover. I'm not alarmist. There's nothing wrong with Islam taking over Sweden. What's wrong with it? Nothing. Sweden is a sweet Christian country. Now it'll become an Islamic country. Maybe after another 50 years, 100 years. Because the rate of conversion of Christians to Islam is very high and a lot of Christians are marrying Islamic men and one of the conditions in marriage in Islam is that you become a Muslim and so they become a Muslim. But they are the seeds of what will happen to Europe because you do not have a working population and you need these people there to work. It all started with Germany, you know. They wanted uh, guest workers and they got them from Turkey. Because they didn't have the men, the young men, to do the menial jobs. France, which has the biggest number of Muslims in Europe. Now the question which the European powers are really wondering is what's going to happen to us? Europe is a small place comparatively. There are about 20, 30 countries, you know, just spread out in Europe. Some of them are so small that you just need one kick and they will be nowhere, you know. Small populations. Sweden, for example, I just told you. Uh, nothing, uh, no big population. And that being the pace, the question is what happens to Europe in future? Europeans have been fighting the Muslims for nearly a thousand years. You know the Crusades, there was a big battle on for the Holy City. Then the Ottoman Empire came and they ruled most of Eastern Europe, converted a lot of Christians to Christianity. Constantinople, which is now called Istanbul, was the center of the Holy Roman Empire. 
be collapsed. So it's been a long hill battle between Muslim states and the Christians. The Christians must somehow maintain themselves, got out of the predicament, and the after the end of the First World War, the Ottoman Empire collapsed, and Islam went into decline. That is, the Islamic states went into decline, I'll say that. Now there's a resurgence. The Islamic states are realizing that their rights are there and they don't want to tolerate any insult to their religion. I will definitely say that burning the Quran is an insult. For that matter, if you burn any holy book, it's got no meaning really. I mean, what is the purpose? You've got to, you feel something is wrong in this uh, he thought, then you've got to debate it. You can't just go around and burn the Quran or tomorrow you say, okay, we'll burn the Gita or the Bible. It's got no relevance. And initially, and what my report says, that the uh, police had given the permission to this gentleman to burn the uh, Quran and he, they were also giving him police protection. Probably there will be a backlash, but of course not up to that level now because the only country who's really affected and worried about it is Turkey. Though they have been some statements here and there from Saudi Arabia and the UAE and Pakistan, but they, I don't think, are that serious about the whole thing because they realize that the man who's doing it is a maverick and he shouldn't be given any importance. But the bigger problem is the minorities which are there in Tibet, in uh, Sweden, and what is going to happen to Sweden. I was reading a statement by one of the eminent journalists who had forecast that Sweden and another country, let's in due course, after 2050, become Islamic. Uh -huh. And that is the point which uh, Sweden should worry about. As I said to you, it doesn't matter whether you become Islamic or you don't become, but this is a demographic change which is likely to take place. And people must be prepared for it. Gentlemen, I close now. I hope you like this small insight into a problem in Sweden. And I close now and say, Gahin, glory to India. Take care, subscribe to my channel. I hope you do. Share it with your friends and like it also. Thank you.